So in today's video review, we are going to be reviewing the Energy Kodiak. In this video, we're going to take a look at some different uses. We're going to talk about the features of this product. The Kodiak can recharge over 100 phones, power lights for a week, or run a refrigerator for a full day. Add solar panels or extra batteries and keep it running for days on end. These ports here are for the base camp LED lights that uh, Energy sells here. Uh, Energy Kodiak. It's now getting quite the reputation itself, being an extremely portable, very reliable power source. I have plugged my entire camper up to the Kodiak generator several different times. It will turn on everything. It, it will recharge the house batteries. Uh, it will turn on all the lights, all the 12 volt appliances, all that kind of stuff. So from what I can tell, this is one of the best solar generators out in the market. Can we DIY a better one? Let's take a look. Now the key to any DIY project is to make a better product for less. So let's see if we can achieve that on this one. How much is this thing? Wow, it's 1500 bucks. Okay, internal battery capacity, 1100 watts. Well, watt hours, right? AC inverter, 1500 watts. Pure sign. So it's 1500 bucks for the unit by itself. And it's like $2,500 for wow another x they had a thousand dollars just for those panels huh that's crazy now here are the things that you are going to need you're gonna need one case from amazon you're gonna need 42 of these pouch cells you're gonna need an inverter you're going to need a charger you're gonna need plugs and connectors you're gonna need some cables some relays some tools for a full list of all the components needed look down in the description you can find a link there so the first thing is to build the battery packs. We've chosen these eight amp hour LiPo pouches. All right, in my opinion, these are packaged weird. This is kind of too long. So what I want to do is cut this shorter. Make sure you don't cut into the cell. It's only the little tab, right? So that's what you could do. You gotta make sure that all this crap is out of there. Sticker off. So because you're gonna stack these on top of each other, I suggest you take out as much scrap as you can possibly take so that it doesn't get in the way. These cells are particularly hard to connect into packs as they have aluminum tabs that cannot be soldered. So I'm using eyelets made out of brass, using a hole punch to make holes on the tabs and use the eyelets to connect two cells together. Then later this can be used to solder leads and balance cables into them. So we are basically arranging these like a typical LiPo pack seven cells in series with the balance lead into a balance connector. We are making six of them and finishing them with captain tape all around. After you tape them up all like this, then what you do is you put them in here. One on this side, one on that side, one on this side, one on this side. There we go. Now eventually we're gonna put a plate in here to protect them. On top of that, we're gonna put this guy. This is the 2000 watt inverter. The other cells are gonna go in here in front. We'll tape them up in here and then another one right here. The very next thing to do is to lay out all the components in here. Okay, so I think I wanna place that here. Probably this one right here. Is these guys here. This guy over here maybe, here these two over here i think that's the layout that we're going to do let's drill all the holes okay by four we mark it in here I'm gonna use one of these step bits
here we go. Next is this guy. This is the thing that you will need for that. 54 millimeter or two and an eighth hole saw. So here are the cells on the bottom and then I've loaded up the inverter here but now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this slack here these don't need to be this long because they're going to be plugged in here so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut them to give it just enough slack there So here it is, uh, pretty much finished wiring everything, now I'm going to connect it and see how this goes. Start connecting the batteries, here are the, the 24 volt relays, first battery is gonna go, should we connect this there, let's see. <laughs> Whoops, don't make the same mistake as I did, see check your wiring and why? check polarity. I guess I'm gonna need a new meter. All right, so now we're just connecting all of the batteries into these harnesses here. The last one back here on the bottom. So then, here we go. We put this guy in here. So this is gonna be the charger. Does this thing have power? No, right? Oh, it does. So there's no power now. Positive. Okay, now on the other side, the solar stuff, charge controller. So all we have to do is connect a plug in. There we go, that's the one. Here we go. This guy is the remote, and then the final cables. There we go. Okay, alrighty. Finally, what we have to do is we have to set up our meter here right so you'll have to go and click on OVP that one will have to set it to 29.5 OPP that is gonna we're gonna be setting it at 2500 watts that's the over uh, power protection OCP okay that one we're gonna set it to uh, 100 amps OFT it's actually over time protection so we're not gonna use that one OA8, that is the battery's capacity, so it's 48 amp hours. Then LOP, low voltage protection, we're going to set that at 20 volts. And then we're going to go one down to where the little cursor disappears. We're going to click on it. Okay, so maybe two. There we go. So two down, and then you click, click OK, and now it's 100%, uh, 29 volts. Yeah, it's the, the battery's pretty, pretty full. Uh, and then what you have to do to get this start, all the green ones are the ones that are activated. So it's going to overprotect, overpower protect, over, you know, voltage protect, overpower protect, all the stuff. And then to turn it on, you just make sure the... Uh, out ooh why is that one turning that's weird okay there we go okay I don't know why that was turning red and green again but with that the system should be armed the relays are on so you should be able to turn the main inverter there we go. And then you shall see how much power you're grabbing from there. You see the lights here, which means all these are ports are going to be live. These ones, that one, this one, even this one right here. These two, 
and of course this is to put the uh, solar uh, and then this is to charge it you turn this on here and it'll start charging it once it's discharged if you don't want to use the solar let's put a load on here and see how that works here we go Ooh, 400 watts that is 400 watts for now let's do a big load Dang. 1000 watts about 40 amps all right so here we go it's on everything is on on this guy ready to go right Kona this is ready to go so let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of the very popular Kodiak generator and our DIY version right on capacity the Kodiak 1100 watt hours our DIY version 1200 watt hours on power output the Kodiak 1500 watts our DIY version 2000 watts the Kodiak has a 30 amp RB plug yes our DIY also has a 30 R 30 amp RB plug USB plugs the Kodiak has four our DIY version has eight the 110 plugs the Kodiak had six ours has four okay on the price here the Kodiak sells for fifteen hundred dollars for just the inverter unit ours comes out to 787 around half the price of the kodiak now with solar panels the kodiak sells for about twenty five hundred dollars our diy version could be had for about thirteen hundred and forty two dollars with about 300 watts of solar so almost in every single one of these categories our DIY version beats the very popular Kodiak generator found online. Again, for a full list of parts so you can make your very own version, check the links down in the description. And with that, I want to thank you for watching this video. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.